Cheers to you, like Edward Scissorhands. Well, in a previous short video, I explained to you that you should not sharpen the bevel on your scissors, your secretaries, your shears, your tin sips. No, because it's stupid. Although, the manufacturers, oh dear, brain fart time, is how, well, that's exactly how they show you how to do it. It's daft. Well, I'll explain why. All right. Now we have these shears here, these tin snips, which have been sharpened already. So I'm not going to do those. So um, I sharpened them about a week ago. So you know, and they cut paper quite aptly. See, paper, just paper. And they're tin snips. All right. They're not scissors. No, they're tin snips, and they can cut paper because I sharpen them correctly. In fact, they cut better than these do. <laughs> so what we're going to show you is how you should sharpen or hone your secateurs. The principle is the same. Exactly the same. The scissors are a little bit different, you see, because the blades on the scissors they tend to have a bit of a bend in them. Okay, so as they come together, the ends. Once the ends are together, you might see a gap in down the middle of your scissors because they put a bit of a curve on. But shears like secateurs or like tin snips, they are just straight. Well, from the work properly. The backs of the actual blades, in this case these are bypass shears or secateurs, and they, the backs have to be perfectly flat and true to the actual, uh, you know, the mating part as well. So it's not an anvil, what do you call it, they're bypass prunes anyway, but you know, if you get an anvil type that's totally different altogether. But this type, bypass shears or bypass secateurs or shears like this, we have to flatten the backs of them. So that's what we're going to show you. What I'm going to do is just take it apart. And um, I've loosened the screws already, so just so you know. And we're going to stick them onto the magnet, which is down here. And I'm going to bring you, bring you down here so you see exactly what we're doing. Oh, a lot closer, shall we? Oh, and hopefully I don't need to edit this video. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, so I've got three diamond sharpening plates there. They're only cheap ones. The whole point is, is how oh, well you can do it for a song instead of buying new secretaries or or shares okay right now what they show you is they show you using a steel in many cases literally grabbing your shares like this and a sharpener like that and trying to sharpen like that no don't do that it's wrong if the back faces don't meet up properly with each other the backs of the blades well, you're never going to get that scissor action because it works on the basis of two metal surfaces literally well just like that you see it's not necessarily the sharpness it's how well machined they are you know how they marry up together yeah it's like spooning if you know what i mean <laughs> sorry <laughs> so let's remove the serrated nut and the lock piece there and we have another screw just here remove that I did do these a few weeks ago actually, so I've been using them. I'll just clean them up because they're a bit gunk on. So we just need to, they're not cutting properly. So um, what we need to do is make sure that they, you know, make them so they do. So we remove all the parts. Sometimes this bottom one gets a bit stuck. It is. Uh, I need to knock it off with. Oh, that's what they do. Oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. There you go, it's off. Right, now all of these aren't too bad, they weren't cutting properly. So, what I tend to do is, well, I tend to use these diamond sharpens anyway. You could use an oil stone, like so, as long as it's flat. Um, but I like to use just white spirit for my lubricant for my diamond stones or plates, or a thin oil. Sometimes I might use Windex, you know, Windoline type stuff like this, blue shit. Um, but on the whole, I, I prefer, whenever possible, to use white spirit because they're my tools all rust. The idea of putting anything as water base on, on metal don't seem to be true to me. And I've got a rag thereby as well. So I've got any, you know, I'll clean them as I go. I've got my rag. I've got my steel here for honing, um, which is literally just a drill bit. And it's a shank of the drill bit we use. It's a new drill bit. It hasn't been put in the chuck, so there's no nasty bits on there. It's perfectly smooth. And it's a high speed steel. There's no need to spend like 20, 30 quid on a, on a steel when you would go on. No. Yeah, you know, just silly. We can waste so much money in life, can't we? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the backs and then put a bevel on. But the back is the most important part. If we don't do that, you're not actually ever. You're never going to get a sharp edge. And that one's the uh, 300. That one, that one's 600. We're going to be using the 600. 300 probably do, but I think we'll use the 600. Right. Right. 
it's important that these are flat. You know, otherwise your whatever shape is on there will end up on here, you see. So we just move, place it um, back side down, yeah, put it on his back, and then we just hone the back. And you, you can feel it, you know. You've got to, you got get feedback. Whenever you do sharpening, it's always feedback. Put equal pressure on the back. And one way of telling is, if you get your finger out and run it along that edge head, if it feels notchy, you know, there's more work to be done. You know, across heads, you can feel it through your finger out. It's actually not that bad. A little bit more than you're doing. Once I'm happy with that, I'll then move down to a finer grit, such as, oh, it's got two and a half here. That'll do. That's two and a half thousand. The three thousand size of three thousand. So we'll just wipe that off. We don't want any grit or anything on there, do you? And then we'll just clean the back of that up a little bit more. The better, you know, the smoother the actual uh, surfaces, surfaces that have to marry together, the better. We want them to slide beautifully together. The back face is corroded a little bit on there, on the, on the primary bevel. Um, the back on this is actually in not too bad condition, but that's okay. It wasn't longer, I didn't be honest. But being as I had uh, requests, I was okay, the video was all very well, but uh, they didn't actually show us how to sharpen them. So you can get a 60 seconds, you know? <laughs> it's about the, it was more about the principle than the actual sharpening, that's what I was trying to explain. You see it on the edge, you'll see it all the way along. You must have a continuous polished edge. If you haven't got that, they're not going to marry up. If they don't marry up, they won't cut paper. If you don't cut paper, you won't cut green wood, such as when you uh, prune your roses, for instance, in the rose garden. Have you got a rose garden? I haven't. No, I've got plenty of gardens. It's called fields, actually, but you know. So let's bring it in like so. That is there, I think. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just see what I'm doing. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to bring the edge, the micro bevel, start on the back, on the back edge near the pivot. And literally bring it, sweep like a sweeping action around 20 degrees, just like so. So your plain irons, you might do 20, 26 to 28. This is about 20 degrees, it's quite shallow. Just do that a few times. You should feel it. Yeah, yeah can you feel it? It'll grip your skin. I'm just trying to pluck it, it'll pluck your skin. A bit more on the end, I think. You can get magnetic. Um, Things that you put on the back to help you get the bevel, but because it's a curve, they don't work. Now, sharpening with anything that's round, like these things, unless it's already round, like an internal round, a like, uh, con uh, concave round, well then you shouldn't be using them on a flat. Now you see people sharpen their knives and stuff with those steels, like, oh, like Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> no, that's a quick way to destroy your knives. You'll end up eventually having um, a roller coaster edge. To it. <laughs> it won't be. It won't be a true curve. Oh, that's nice. That's, that, I feel it plugging all the way along. That. And is there a? No, not hardly. No, nope, don't think there's any burr there at all. Hardly. A little bit there. It's not about the sharpness of it, it's about how well, so you know, you'll see these people, oh yeah, you know, slicing through the paper, what have you. It's not about that, it's about how these two two um, components, how they come together. That's what's important. If you hold them together and squeeze hard there, then you should feel some resistance against these edges. And I can't feel it, that's marrying up. So I think we're ready to put it back together. I could clean the, the back faces up, but there's no point. But as soon as I start using it again, they're going to get all grubby in that, and they don't, it doesn't affect it. So, um, yeah, they'll, they'll start pitting again because the, uh, the resins and gone as well is actually in the plants themselves that you're trimming. So, what I do tend to do is use a steel and just run that over a couple of times, or well, like 20 times actually. <laughs> Let's keep doing that until I'm satisfied. Now, I've got a burr there now. I've actually put a burr on by doing that. Just with the steel, just like that. So hard. You can feel it there. Just remove it. You don't want that burr. Okay. 
There you there. Let's try that again. Yeah, it feels like we've got continuous contact. If you have that, the likelihood is it's actually going to well, it'll cut, basically. Which is, you know, is the goal. That's what we wanted to do, isn't it? What we're going to do. All right, and then grab the screws. There's one here. So we'll go on there. So I'll go to one there first. I feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. Right, let's try and screw up there. Right, so these are um, these are copy of the Fesco, uh, Fesco 2s. It's quite a popular design. Let me try that way around. There you go. There it goes. Hang on, another one. Yep. <laughs> I actually got the right way around. Quite tight to get on that on. That's cool. So that's going to go on there like so. So we want this nut which goes in from the, from the back end. You, get your, you put your, your nut, your bolt and your nuts through the back end. <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Screw it down. Screw your nut down. <laughs> right, anyway. <clears throat> yeah, stop now, stop there. Right, if I put this near the microphone, you should be able to hear it if I got more tight. If I put these in the microphone, you should hear the sound. Let's keep these up. Right, so, I'll put that's a bit right there. Let's grab the spring, put the spring back in. Okay, and I'll put the lock on. Put on there. This one here is the a lock, the lock port there. It's like a little dog. So, and then we should be able to test them before we adjust them properly. Oh, you idiot. Oh, I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. I am. Right, I made a movie. I made a movie. I'm going to myself. Okay, let's remove that. So, I'm not editing this video. It will be too long. It's been 14 minutes so far. Ah. I see warts and all. That's what you're saying, warts and all. Oh, I forgot. Ah, then I dropped it on the floor. So that should go there. Like that. That's it. So now the nut goes back on the So, Arr, easy mistake, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, it is. Right, I've got this other little screw. We'll go back in there with this paw. So we'll go back in again. Set the, the tension first. Wait, that's just tight enough. Maybe not that tight. Oh, that's, that's, that's going to loosen up a bit. It's a bit tight, and that will loosen up. And use. So that's probably about right. And this little pore here stops that from undoing. So it's got a little slot in as well, so make sure you push it towards it, towards the, um, the nut. All right, so that's all on it. Let's put the lock on, which is on here. So you can lock them up so you don't stab yourself in your pocket. Do, 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 do. Hopefully these are gonna be good. Hope so. Right, if that works, that goes across there. Right. Definitely sounds right. Let's have a look. <gasps> Ooh! Look at that. Look at that. Wow. They're so nice. It's absolutely perfect. Now, if you want to be cutting green wood, like roses and stuff, rose stems and stuff, and you're pruning for the winter, what have you, they're absolutely perfect, man. Look at that. So, it's just proving the point, you see. You don't try and put a bevel on. No. You utilize the bevel that's already there. But the, mo the most important thing is to make sure the backs are flat. Okay? Make sure you're flat on your back. No, your back is flat. Oh, I'll get there in a minute. All right? Because then they'll actually cut. Look at that's wet. That's wet with, yeah, that's wet paper, that is there. 
Uh, uh, scissor hands. Topi. So topi? Topi. A bit of topi. Yeah. I made a poodle. <laughs> anyway, that is how you sharpen your, your shears, your secateurs, your tin snips, and your scissors. Okay? These ones you can't sharpen. But, you know, if there are, if, there, if you can remove the actual screw in the middle, which you should, on a good pair, you should, these aren't, these are rubbish, um, you should be able to remove the screw in the middle, and then you can flatten the back to make sure it all marries up perfectly. True. But with the scissors, because of the curve on them, you can't use a wide um, stone, you need to make sure you're using a narrow one, because you've got to go with the curve. And what you're trying to do is make sure these edge faces here marry up perfectly with each, each other. These scissors obviously are not worth it, because they're broken, broken. So anyway, if you want to put the old like button, and subscribe, and maybe a little bell icon, because then you get one fuzzy video in your pocket every time I upload another video. And I hope you'd be excited about that, yeah. And if you want to support our rewilding project here in France, where we're making bat roots, bird boxes houses, and hedgehog houses, and we're planting a thousand trees on two hectares of land, if you want to be a part of that, there's a GoFundMe link down below. And what we'll do is we'll plant a tree on your behalf, but it'll be your tree. We will put your name with that tree, or it could be in memory of a loved one, you see. And we ain't going nowhere. No. Anyway, it's time for me to go. So I'll say toodaloo, you know. So toodaloo, not toodaloo. 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 Okay? Okie dokie.